and welcome back. This is episode number 15 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. In this tutorial, we are going to control the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi circuit from a web application using Flask and Python. And once again, like I did previously in this series, I'm going to show you the problem we want to solve as a challenge, and then I'm going to write the solution with you step by step. So your challenge is to choose which LED to turn on from a web browser. So from a URL here, depending on what you write in the URL, you're going to choose to power on or to power off a certain LED. So we have three LEDs. We're going to choose which LED and then if we want to turn it on or turn it off. All right. So you can start from what we have written previously. So here's the code that you can write. I'm going to save it as activity11.py. And I'm going to give you a few tips so you can get started. So we are going to create a new root here. Okay. So app.root. And then, well, I'm going to write the root first and I'm going to explain it to you. So slash LED and then slash with angle brackets int LED number and then state slash and then int state. All right, that's the new root, and then we're going to create a function. So what is this? Well, we're going to start, so slash LED, and then you see we have here int LED number with angle brackets. This means that we're not going to write this in the URL. This is going to be replaced by an integer, okay? So if you want to have dynamic URLs that you can write numbers or text or whatever inside, then you can use this angle bracket with the data type and then the kind of the variable name that we're going to have inside our function. So here, when you write the URL, you will do slash LED slash, you will write a number and then slash state slash another number. And actually, I need to finish this with the angle brackets. All right. So for example, slash LED slash zero slash state slash one. So provided that we start to count at zero, zero is going to be the first LED. And then if we get the state one, it means we want to turn on the LED. So we're going to turn on the first LED. For the state, to keep it simple, we can say that zero means turning off, one means turning on. All right. So you have this URL that I already gave you. And then let's call this function switch LED, for example. And for that one, we're going to receive parameters. So the parameters is the ones that we define here. So it's going to be called LED number. And we know it's going to be an integer. And then we have state. OK, that's the one here. OK, and then you can write, of course, the content of the function. So what you will do, we have three LEDs. So what you can do is, as we did previously in this course, you can create a list. So you create a list of LEDs here. You can initialize the first state. And then in this function, you will need to, well, you will need to first validate that those two are correct numbers. Okay, because I could give whatever number. I could give 5,000 here. I could give minus 10 here. So you want to first verify that the numbers are correct. Okay, so that this corresponds to an index in the list. And that this is either zero or one. Okay, so after you validate that, then you can turn on or turn on the uh, chosen LED. All right, and now you can press pause on the video, try to do the challenge by yourself, and then watch the solution. So I give you the beginning of the code. So we're going to start from what we had before. I give you the beginning of the code for the root. But first things first, let's initialize our LEDs. So we're going to import LED also from the GPIO 0. And then we can initialize our LEDs. We're going to do that, for example, just after the push button. So we could do LED 1, 2, and 3, and then add them into a list. But let's just create a list directly. So LED list is equal to, and then let's put brackets, and let's initialize the LEDs directly inside the list. So LED like that with, so the first LED was on pin, so on GPIO number 17. Then LED, the second was on the GPIO number 27. And then we have LED with 22 for the third GPIO. Great. That's going to initialize the LEDs. So that's going to initialize all of those pins to output mode. And it should be turned off. But just to be sure, let's do a for loop for LED 
in LED list, we do LED dot off. Okay, so it's quite quick to do. And this we've done it already previously. Great, now all the LEDs are initialized. So you see we initialize all the hardware here and the app. Then we create the routes and we can use the hardware in the different functions here. And then we run the application. So let's now write the content of this switch LED function here. First thing we want to do is to validate that the LED number is correct and that the state is correct. Let's do one by one. And actually, instead of checking if it's correct, let's check if it's not correct. And if it's not correct, we're going to return an error message directly. And we're not going to go further with the function. Okay. So if, if what? Well, the LED number here is going to correspond to an LED, so to an index in that list. So it's not correct. First, if the index is lower than zero, I'm going to write this. So if LED number is strictly lower than zero, then it's not going to be valid. Okay, we cannot have a negative index. And I'm going to put an or. So if the LED number, so if the index is lower than zero, or if the index is also greater than, well, the last index, how to check that? Well, we can use LED number greater or equal than the length of the LED list. And why that? Because, well, you can see the last index actually corresponds to the length minus one. Okay, the length is three here. So the index is going to be zero, one, and two. All right, so two is the last index. If you have three, three is out of the list. So I check that the LED number, if it's greater or equal than the length, then we are out of the list. So if we have one of those two conditions, we know that the index is not in the list and is not correct. So we can return, for example, wrong LED number and why not put the number that we have provided. So I'm going to do str because it's an integer LED number. Great. So now I go back here and I know that after I pass this if, okay, so if the, the condition here is false, it means that the LED number is correct. I'm going to do the same thing with the state. So if, and I'm going to check if the state is not correct. So we know the state must be zero or it must be one. So there are just two values. To check that easily, I can do if state is different than zero and state different than one. Okay, and I use the end keyword here. So we just have two values. We check if it's different than that one and different than this one, then we're gonna enter the if and return an error message. For this, you could have written it differently. For example, you could have said if the state is strictly lower than zero or state is strictly greater than one, then it's going to be basically the same thing. Okay. So for those validations, maybe you have come up with something that's different than me if you have written the activity by yourself. And if it works, then it's completely fine. Okay. There is not always just one solution to a problem. There are as many solutions as there are people writing a solution. So now with this, I can do return and let's say state must be zero or one. All right. And we are done with data validation. So we know that at this point, if we didn't return anything, it means that the LED number corresponds to an index in the list and the state is either zero or one. So what I can do now is I can check, for example, if state is equal to let's start with zero then we want to turn off an led and which led the one that corresponds to the index here so i will do led list and then put the index which is led number here okay so i get access to the element of the list which is an led and i do dot off and that's it then i can do so i go back here i can do l if state is equal to one and actually i don't really need to do this because if it's not zero it's going to be one we just validated here that the state is only going to be zero or one okay so i don't even need to write this l if i can just write else it's going to be the same led list with led number 
dot on. So we turn off or we turn on the LED. And finally, let's not forget, and this is quite important, that's not the end of the function. We need to return something. If we don't return anything, we might get an error. So let's return. And well, we don't really need to return anything. Let's just say, okay. So we return a string here. If we didn't validate the LED number, we also return a string if we didn't validate the state. And after that, we return a string to say, okay, so that we have performed the action. And just remove the extra spaces here. And let's have a last check. So we initialize stuff here. And then we have the root, validation, the action, the return. All right, looks good. So I'm going to save the file with Control S. And now I could run it from here. I'm going to choose to run it from the terminal. Okay, so let's go back to the terminal. And well, let's just make sure that you don't have a Flask server running anywhere. Okay. Because if you were still running something on the terminal, for example, and you run something on Thony, you might get an error. All right, so here I'm going to choose to only run this from the terminal. So I am in my Python program. So let's do Python 3 activity 11. Let's run that and the server is running. And to test that, let's open a web browser. Okay, so have the local host here is going to work but also with the ip address and the port 5000 let's just make sure it's working okay but at least the home page is working so the server is working and now i'm going to add a slash led slash i will need to give a number let's start with the first led zero and then slash state and slash i need to give zero or one let's use one to turn on the first led so let's press enter and let's look at what's going to happen here. You see the first LED was turned on. All right. I can replace the number here with one. That's going to be the second LED because that's the index one. All right. We turn on the second LED. Let's do the same thing with two. Great. And now let's see with three, for example, we're going to get an error. So it's working, but we get wrong LED number three. Okay. Now let's say that I want to turn off the second LED. So that's going to be the index number one. I do index one here and then state zero. I press enter and you see I turn off the second LED. Great. So it's correctly working. We could turn on and off any LED that we want on the circuit. And let's just finish to verify that everything is working here. So you have seen if I put LED that's outside of the range. For example, 10, we have an error. Let's put a negative number as well, like minus one. Well, actually you can't even put minus one here because the minus is gonna be considered as a dash. So you're gonna get a URL not found anyway. So let's go back to zero here. Okay. And then state, we can have state zero. We can have state one, it's gonna work. But now let's do state two and you see state must be zero or one. Okay, so you can see that validating the data that you get in a web server is very important. Okay, so you only execute an action with an input that is valid. Hey, this is Edouard. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial series a lot and that you could get some real value out of it. Now, this series is actually a free extract from my much larger course named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This complete course contains 10 hours of content and will take you from a complete beginner to a Raspberry Pi maker with a strong intermediate level where you become really autonomous and confident to start any project that you want. So if you like the way I teach and if you want to go further with Raspberry Pi, starting from this last tutorial, well, I recommend that you check the course out. The link is in the description. And just in case you're wondering what you're gonna learn, well, here is a sneak peek of what's inside the course. So here I'm inside the course and we're gonna check on the right here the curriculum. We have 15 sections. So the first section, we're gonna learn what is Raspberry Pi. We've seen that already in this uh, series. We are then going to install the Raspberry Pi OS, which is what we've done as well. But here you can see we also have some extra steps, for example, with Raspberry Pi Connect, which seems very promising. Okay, on section three and four, then we have kind of a mini course on Python 3. 
So if you need a refresher of the basics in Python 3, then I got you covered with those about two hours of Python 3. We are then going to build the circuit like we did in this series. Okay, and practice. So build the circuit, learn how to use the GPIOs. Okay, there's additional activities here and practice more with the GPIOs. We've done only one activity so far in this series, but I have two more activities for you to practice. Then we are going to detect in section eight, detect movement with a PIR sensor. That's gonna be a very interesting feature to add to our circuit. So here you see, we see how to add it to the circuit, how to control with Python and an extra activity. Then we have two sections on how to use the terminal on the Raspberry Pi. So if you don't know anything about the terminal or Linux, well, you're gonna also get kind of a mini crash course on that. So how to use the terminal specifically for the Raspberry Pi and Linux, and then also how to interact with the terminal from Python 3. And there is more, then we're gonna see how to send an email directly from the Raspberry Pi. That's super useful, for example, to send alerts when something is happening on your Pi. We also then have another section on the Raspberry Pi camera. We're gonna see how to well, plug the camera and then take photos and videos both from the terminal and Python plus an extra activity. Then we come back to the Flask server. That's what we've done here in this series. And finally, there is a final project. So here's the, basically what we're gonna do in this final project is we're gonna take all the foundation that we have with all the sensors and functionalities and knowledge that you got in this course and build a final project to practice on everything. And in this project, well, you see, we're gonna start some scripts from the terminal. We have the Raspberry Pi with the camera with a few things on the breadboard. And when we detect a movement, we are going to take a photo and send that photo by email. So you see, we receive a new photo by email and then we also put that photo on a web server. So that's gonna be available for us to get using a web server. So from a web page, you can see the photos that were taken from your Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's a complete alarm system that we're going to build in this final project for the course. All right, so you can just click in the link in the description to also see this outlined, a few preview that you can check. You can watch the reviews. So the course is already quite popular here on Udemy and I encourage you to check it out. All right, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the course.